Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking again about the upcoming pattern. We've been talking about this for a few days. We obviously skipped yesterday, but I want to update you guys on what that temperature pattern moving forward over the next couple of weeks will look like. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think our next severe weather event is going to be? Because it's been pretty quiet. Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. All right, now here we are taking a look at how the first 14 days of the month of May went. And as you can see, things in the east were quite cold. If you remember correctly, uh, it definitely was. It didn't feel like spring at all. It felt a lot like winter at times, actually, getting very cool at night. It was hard to plant your plants. It was just awful there in the beginning of May. And then we saw a bit of a warm-up there for the second half of the month, as you can see. Completely reverse rolls here. We saw the cold in the west and then the warm uh, return to the east. So it completely flipped. Uh, and that's really how the beginning of June has been mostly. Uh, we saw some cooler air there towards the very, very end. Probably the last one or two days of this 14-day period and then the first couple of days of June. But now we're mostly heading into a warmer pattern here. So let's just take a look at how the, the entire month of May went. And as you can see, it was mostly colder in the east, with the exception of the immediate east coast. As you can see, there is some yellows there. Near normal, basically, for the very, very close east coast there. The southwest was warmer than normal. That's where most of the warmer air was located for most of the time. All right, now let's finally, let's finally take a look at June. And here we are, finally, in the month of June. This is going to be for today, the high temperatures. And as you can see, it's going to be a little bit cooler along the East Coast, near normal conditions. And then the South Central, very cold compared to normal, is mostly due to a lot of raininess that is in the area. Uh, we've had 3.57 inches, now 3.58 inches update <laughs> here in Southeastern Virginia. Uh, it's been raining for a very long time, about three days. It's just not really stopped. So it has been a very rainy uh, period of time. Uh, it's been basically flooding around here, and I'm sure it's pretty similar for some regions. We have very warm air up there for the north central United States, 16 to 30 degrees above normal for the plains. Of, I would say the Dakotas, Minnesota, Montana, Wyoming mostly. Uh, but we can see the west coast is mostly dominated by warmer than normal conditions, and that is a positive PNA. But we are heading towards a negative PNA. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly what the PNA chart looks like. Let's just move on to our very next frame, and this is going to be Saturday, June 5th. And as you can see, uh, for the East Coast, we get a little bit warmer there, especially areas further north. Uh, for the Southeast, we're near normal, and then for the South Central United States, we're still below normal temperatures. Out West, things are warm, but you can see some colder air making its way in, and we saw this a couple of days ago. We were probably looking forward towards Saturday. Now it's a lot closer, uh, but we eventually see this air work its way from north to south down the West Coast, uh, Canada goes first, then Washington, Oregon, and eventually California will also enter into the below normal temperatures, and that will be a fully negative PNA. And basically, a negative PNA means there's a lot of cold air on the west coast, but east of that, there's very warm temperatures. In a positive PNA, there's very warm temperatures there for the west coast, uh, but there's colder than normal conditions to the east of it. So it's basically whatever the west coast is, it's usually the opposite east of it. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to move on towards Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and just move right on with it. All right, now here we are taking a look at Sunday, and this is going to be June 6th. And as you can see, still the northeast, the, the uh, north central, a lot of the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley are all very warm compared to normal here on Sunday, June 6th. For the south central United States and the southeast, we do still have that cold pocket. I'm kind of questioning if that's ever going to go away or if it's kind of going to stick around. We see the northwest is getting colder and colder as that colder air tries to work its way south and, and basically just um, eat up that positive PNA and turn it into a negative PNA. We are waiting for that transition and it should be coming, obviously. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Monday. And as you can see, a lot of things change here by Monday, June 7th. Uh, we see California finally cooling down, so that negative PNA is definitely winning. Uh, there's warmer air still for the north central United States, the Great Lakes, the northeast, the mid-Atlantic. Uh, but the southeast and the south central United States are still holding on to some of those near normal conditions or below normal conditions. Don't get me wrong, this is still going to be 80s and 90s uh, regardless, but uh, just not... Uh, you know, not as above normal as it possibly could be. Probably a lot of you are very thankful for that, actually. It's still going to be very hot, though. 
Uh, and by the time I reach Tuesday, and that's going to be uh, June 8th here, as you can see, we have the very cold temperatures in the west. So this is our this is our negative PNA just really setting in. We see the greens there. That is going to be 10 to 15 degrees below normal. That is going to be a solidified negative PNA. We see the warmer temperatures begin at the Rockies, still for the north central, still for the northeast, and still for the mid-Atlantic. They are creeping their way a little bit further south there along the eastern seaboard, I will say, uh, those warmer than normal conditions. Uh, so it could get a little bit hotter for North Carolina and South Carolina. A lot of those greens, it's just not quite as cold for the south central, I guess the Gulf states mostly. Uh, it's not quite as cold down there. Uh, it's starting to warm up a little bit, but it's still, you know, pretty far below normal. Uh, but I do expect that to kind of just sit around. It really doesn't look like that's going to change any, anytime soon, really. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, um, I don't really see a massive change in that anytime soon. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to move on towards Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then we're going to take a look at some actual temperatures. And then we're going to take a look at that PNA chart for you guys as well. Where we're going to show you why this could be happening. Now, by the time we're taking a look at Wednesday, June 9th, as you can see, it's basically a lot of the same. Cold for the west. We see warmth there for the, for the Rockies, the northern plains, the Great Lakes, the northeast. Uh, in the mid-Atlantic as well. Uh, that warmth in the east is a little bit less potent. This is a longer range kind of outlook here from the European model. Not quite sure uh, what's going on here, uh, but it has more near normal conditions for the eastern United States with warmth in the middle by this point. Very, very interesting pattern we find ourselves in. By the time we reach Thursday, these things are especially true. You can see some blue showing up from the northeast, some blue showing up from the mid-Atlantic as well. I'm not quite sure if this will happen with the negative PNA going on out west. I am kind of questioning if this will be the case. I think we'll be above average or near normal, mostly for the east coast. Uh, but by the time we reach Friday, it is evident that this model wants to take us into a colder than normal condition pattern here for the eastern United States as well. Keeping that warmth mostly in between the west and east coast, mostly for the Rockies, so mostly on the western side of things. Very interesting. We see some green showing up for the southeast as well. It's not even just cold. It's actually pretty darn cold compared to normal. So very, very interesting. Now, as you can also see, those temperatures for the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and the north central United States, they're a little less warm, but they're still there. They're very far above normal temperatures. This is going to be the most consistent area with the warmer than normal conditions. Same story with the Rockies. It has just been around for quite a while here by this point. As you can see by Saturday, it is still basically the same pattern. Very cold in the west coast, very cold in the southeast. We're starting to warm up in the northeast, but still the north central United States is, is still very hot. Uh, by the time we're taking a look at Sunday, it's still the same story. Cold in the west, cold in the southeast, warm in the north and the northeast uh, for the most part. Now, if any of you are questioning that this is going to be a very hot temperature pattern, regardless of those below temperatures or not, below average temperatures or not, we still have upper 80s, lower 90s for the southeast, the mid-Atlantic, the northeast on this frame, which is Monday, June 7th. And by the time we're reaching Wednesday afternoon, that's going to be June 9th, we could see a ton of 90s there for the southeast as well in the mid-Atlantic. So it is going to be hot regardless, uh, and I, I do expect it to be quite hot actually uh, for a lot of this time. Now taking a look at that PNA chart, like I told you guys, we're in a positive PNA still. By the time we reach the 5th, which is tomorrow, we will be heading uh, pretty significantly towards the negative PNA side of things. Uh, and by the time we're reaching the 6th, 7th time frame, we will be at an extreme negative PNA um, by that point. And that pattern should have been, the pattern should set in by the 6th or the 7th for sure. And then we slowly make our way more towards the positive side of things, but we're still at a negative PNA. Uh, so I don't think we will go back to a positive PNA for a while, uh, but we will be at less of a negative PNA if that makes sense. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we are at a 6 out of 6, obviously. Uh, we know that PNA is going very far negative very quickly, so we know that very warm temperatures are on the way for the eastern half of the country. So my confidence couldn't be any higher. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what is your gut feeling for this upcoming winter? Obviously, you can only really go by a gut feeling because it's so far out, but James Marr said, gut feeling... I think this winter will be a surprise. I think it'll be similar winter to 2017 to 2018, so snowy and average temperatures. I think a lot of people would love if that would happen, including myself. Uh, so hopefully that is the case. Good comment of the day there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Bennett, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnes. 
alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falegos, Garys, John Quilisi, and Dwight Phelan. If you would like to be a part of this awesome patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very amazing Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Weather Top Dogs, Hair Farms 1, and Catbite as well. If you would like to join our channel membership, that'll be next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.